Hello everyone, I am Nathan P. Butler and this is a project update for November 2017. This is the second time I'm doing one of these and for those who aren't familiar with it, basically the idea is that each month near the end of the month, I'll give you a quick video that breaks down where things stand for the various projects that I'm working on. For those of you who follow one or another or all, so you have a sense of sort of where things stand at the moment. And this also gives me an opportunity to introduce and thank new patrons or Patreon supporters uh, who hop on via the Patreon over at Nathan P. Butler, right? So patreon.com slash Nathan P. Butler and gives me a chance to thank them in the credits of these videos. They'll also, of course, get thanks in the next edition of A Saga on Home Video, but that'll be a little while still in coming. So I gave you an update back in October as the first of those to kind of explain the process and explain the concept. Now we're in November, I'm gonna pick up with an update on where things stand as of now. But first, let me welcome three new patrons to the Patreon. First, we have a new traveler through the Learniverse, which is that lower tier. Those are the folks who are able to get themselves into the thanks of the video and the book, as I mentioned previously, uh, who are also checking out the Patreon page for any posts that I make that are just available to everybody as well. That individual is Austin Pierce, so welcome, Austin. We also have two new denizens of the Learniverse. That's that $5 tier. That's the folks who gain access to all those audio commentaries that I'm producing and putting up on Patreon. Uh, in this case, it is Robert Medina and Bobby Craig who joined those ranks there. So thank you very much, Robert and Bobby. Uh, Bobby is actually someone who I used to play Destiny with quite a bit on PS4 uh, and a little bit of Battlefront. So you may wind up seeing Bobby pop up at some point on a Battlefront 2 live stream or something uh, because we did tend to game a lot together back in the day whenever the original Destiny was the game of choice for multiplayer gaming online. So Thank you very much for coming aboard, all three of you. And let's move on into what's going on with the update for this month. I guess first, let me provide a caveat for all of this, and that is some of the craziness that's been happening in November that have made things a little less productive than I would have hoped. November, a lot of times, is sort of the breather time, right? The new edition of the Star Wars Timeline Gold has come out in October, which is usually the case, usually if I'm only doing one per year, I put it out around its anniversary. In this case, it was the 20th anniversary over at uh, StarWarsFanWars.com slash Timeline. 20th anniversary of the Star Wars Timeline Gold, the most comprehensive Star Wars chronology available anywhere, etc., etc. Uh, but since that already came out, November is usually sort of the <sighs> breather time. Take a breath, recuperate, re-energize, spend some time eating some good Thanksgiving food and that sort of thing, and then I dive more into the timeline later. And in this case, that breather was sort of interrupted. Even the fact that we have a Thanksgiving break of a week, because in Fulton County, Georgia, where I teach, let's face it, people are from all over the country, so frankly, you've got to have a week for a Thanksgiving break because of all the travel that will be going on. Otherwise, kids will just be taking off school parts of that week anyway. So even having that one full week of a break, even being told, hey, look, we know that you still check the system on weekends, even though you don't have to for your online students. We know that you do that uh, on days that we're off because of, say, a holiday or a teacher work day or something. But look, over the break, actually use it as a break. Put up a message that says teachers will not be available from this time to this time, and that's it. Use it as a real break to re-energize and spend time with your family. Even with that, the stress level of November just shot through the roof. And it's unfortunate, but I guess at least we had the fact that it is a bit of a break and I'm not facing a deadline of trying to get a timeline edition out so that the stress wasn't even higher than it wound up being, but still not exactly the most uh, productive or conducive of months, mainly because of two things. One, the, uh, the minor thing, I guess you could sort of say it's the minor thing, it's the one that's the least disruptive. Um, we've been having a lot of pet issues here. Um, we have three cats of our own. My wife and I have three cats of our own who actually live in the house. Uh, two of them are pretty old. One I got back in 2004 or so. The other one I got back in like late 1998 or early 1999. So we're talking some pretty old cats plus a kitten that's relatively new to the house here that we just uh, got about a year ago and brought in. And we're also taking care of some for my father-in-law until he finds a more permanent place for them, but they're outside. But of the three that are actually ours that are living inside the house, two of them 
have faced some pretty heavy health issues in the last couple of weeks here. And I've wound up taking both of them to the vet. We probably spent about a combined total of about $600 with more to come on just sort of bringing them in, getting them taken care of, um, trying to make sure that whatever it is that they're facing isn't a life-threatening sort of thing. But that's been sort of disruptive uh, from the month standpoint there, the stress, the worry, and everything else for them because we are very attached to them. And then on top of that, the biggest disruption, which some of you already know about because maybe you've watched the Battlefront live streams and we've talked about it uh, with people in the chat and that sort of thing, but I was in a wreck back on the day that the Battlefront 2 Elite Trooper Edition came out. On November 14th, uh, I got into a pretty bad car accident in terms of bad for the vehicles. Luckily, thank God, everybody came out unscathed. Uh, there are basically six people involved. Me and my vehicle, a woman and two young kids in another vehicle, and then uh, two, I think, like 20-something, 30-somethings, um, as if I'm not a 30-something myself, uh, in another vehicle. And the cars are all pretty banged up. Mine may be totaled. I'm betting at least one of the others is totaled, and the other one probably will be able to be repaired. Um, but somehow, everybody involved walked away completely unscathed. Only one person wound up being taken to the hospital in an ambulance, and it was more for, like, hyperventilating and freaking out than it was for a physical thing. Um, so amazing that it worked out like that. Basically what happened was... Uh, there's an intersection in the town that I live in, Palmetto, Georgia. I used to live in Fairburn, Georgia. Now I'm in Palmetto, Georgia. They're both South Fulton County um, in the Atlanta metro area, what's considered the whole Atlanta metro area. Uh, Atlanta metro is huge. Atlanta itself is actually kind of small for a big city. It's the whole area, when you take it all together, that gives it sort of its big presence uh, on the map and in commerce and things like that. But there's a particular intersection where about 60% of all the accidents in this town take place. And I hate it. My wife hates it. We've hated it for a while. But the reason why it's such a place for accidents is because not only is it kind of poorly designed, but it's also a kind of a necessary junction for a lot of people. And it is for us, unless we really want to take kind of a longer way around that in and of itself isn't going to be all that great because while it is probably a safer route from a driving perspective, it also takes you through sort of the lock your doors, roll up your windows kind of area of the town. Um, so a lot of people still go through that intersection. Well, it's basically you've got a highway called Roosevelt Highway or Georgia 29 that's running north-south. The way I envision it is think of this as the main drag. Um, now, there is a crossroad. So if it's going like this, this is going like this, um, that is east-west. And in Palmetto, a lot of things are kind of weird in that a lot of times you have a main drag and then you have a side street that crosses it. But a lot of times the side street will have different names on either side, even though it's the same freaking road. So on one side, this cross street is called Phipps. The other side is called Ballard Place. The Phipps side has like a McDonald's and a gas station over here and a church kind of over here. And then the other side is like Family Dollar and stuff like that. So it's kind of coming out of a parking area on the opposite side. And again, they're just that main drag. So I'm sitting at the stop the stop sign, not a stop light. Uh, it's a stop sign for me, stop sign for the other side, nothing for the highway. I'm sitting at the stop sign just kind of waiting my turn to go. And there's a lady in an envoy on the other side of the highway on that same road that I'm on, but on the part that's named differently, trying to come past where I am, basically trying to cross the opposite direction of me. As she pulls out into relatively busy traffic. I would not have dared it myself. She winds up sort of zipping across and gets basically to the northbound lanes that are right in front of me um, and gets hit by a Lexus that may have been speeding, may not. Uh, they're still researching that right now to see if there's any way to tell, but it probably was because of the, the results that happened from the collision. But basically the Lexus hits the back of this envoy spins the envoy in a complete 180, which then continues on its path toward me, ass first, and slams into the front of my car. Um, I'm just sitting there. Uh, only injury I had, though, was the fact that I find, apparently, that when I'm in an accident, like a, an accident that I can see coming, apparently, I don't scream like a little girl, which is good, but I do kind of scream like a loud Marty McFly as he's going into the barn when he first arrives in 1955. Um, so I... Certainly let out a very manly Marty-esque, surely not feminine, scream 
and screwed up my vocal cords a little bit. But other than that, unscathed. Um, and that was my fault, right? Because that was my reaction. But basically, the entire front of my car got either smashed in or down because the envoy wound up sort of resting on top of it to some degree. So basically, everything ahead of the cab is pretty screwed up. Or the cabin, I guess you call it, is pretty screwed up. The Lexus, the entire front of that is pretty screwed up. The Envoy got away with the least amount of damage, but it's also the larger one, and it took its impact to the side and the back, and it sits higher than mine, so it wasn't as big a thing. Um, but that means that we've been embroiled in this whole thing of me not having access to a vehicle for a while, eventually having to arrange for a rental car, but not knowing how long I'm going to need it, um, getting with my insurance company just in case something were to happen that didn't go through correctly for the others, or... As was the case, they don't come through for a rental car fast enough that I need one, that I have to use mine, and then they have to go through subrogation and all that shit. Um, but basically, at this point, we are now about a week and a half to two weeks out from the actual wreck. The insurance company for the Envoy lady who was mostly responsible and for the Lexus person who may have been at least partially responsible are still duking it out over what percentage of responsibility each one should have, whereas I have zero responsibility because I was just sitting there. Um, kind of the innocent bystander in all of this. But until they get their crap worked out, I won't know exactly what they're going to do as far as the reimbursement type stuff or as far as covering my losses, though they should, they will, um, it looks like, unless we get our lawyers involved, in which case, damn right, they will. Um, but while that's still going on, and I've taken the pictures and sent it to them, they haven't been able to provide any information on whether they would deem the vehicle totaled or what their estimate of the damage is. My insurance company has had to move the car to one of their preferred places so they can see what the damage might be, so they can do estimates and determine whether or not it's totaled and all that kind of crap. So we're caught in the mix of all this, and I have no idea how many more weeks it's going to be until I actually have a vehicle of my own, either my car repaired or a replaced car. Thankfully, we do the Liberty Mutual thing where basically it's a new car replacement or a year or newer replacement so if it turns out that what is being offered by the other insurance or by my own um, basically isn't the amount that uh, you would get for a car that's one year newer and 15,000 miles less, um, then Liberty Mutual makes up the difference so that we can then take care of that. So either way, I'll eventually have a vehicle to drive. But it's been kind of a mess and chaotic with that, dealing with the insurance companies, because it's multiple insurance companies, dealing with the towing place and dealing with the bodywork place. Just kind of a mess. So in a lot of ways, that derailed much of the week or so prior to um, the Thanksgiving break, along with the cat stuff and everything else. So the middle of November has not been nearly as productive as I would have liked it to be. Uh, that said, you know, I have been able to get some stuff done, so let's do the quick run through here. The Star Wars Timeline Gold, the new edition for 2018, is already in the works. Hadn't done a whole lot prior to actually last night. As I'm recording this, uh, the 24th, which I guess was the day after uh, Thanksgiving. But basically, uh, I am caught up now on summaries of all the Marvel and IDW comics at this point. So I went through and got the last issues summarized for Star Wars and Afra and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the IDW Star Wars Adventure stuff. So the comics are caught up. And I've just started reading into uh, The Legend of Luke Skywalker, which is the next book I need to get read and summarized and get all the notes from and all that kind of stuff. And I did just get the Rebel Files, that big deluxe edition that arrived in the mail. Uh, Amazon finally had an order link up for it. But that does mean that uh, I also have to go through Rebel Files and get the information from that entered in. My hope had been to go ahead and actually start watching the videos of the different campaign stuff for the expansions of The Old Republic. But I haven't had the time to do that. And now, as is always the case, I take any moment to just breathe and rest, or something derails my focus for a little while, and boom, Star Wars stuff comes out so rapidly that it just starts piling up. I still need to get through Ghosts of Dathomir for the RPG, just piling up and piling up and piling up. Um, so my hope is that between now and, say, the end of our um, holiday break, Christmas break, semester break, whatever you want to call it, that I'll be able to get fully caught up on that stuff so I can go into the new year fresh without having a bunch of stuff, you know, piling upon me. Um, I mean, even with Rebels, the new season of Rebels, I've managed to get the first two episodes, the two-parter summarized, but nothing since then. It's just, it piles up and becomes a massive effort at one point. That's why October and September tend to be very stressful for the timeline, but I'm hoping that this year, with these updates, to help push me to constantly get more done, 
uh, to be able to report that more is done, that maybe I'll be able to sort of alleviate some of that stress by spreading out the work. We shall see. As for podcasts, let's start with Star Wars Beyond the Films, which is the one that I co-host with Mark Herleman, talking about Star Wars comics and novels and stuff like that. Our most recent episode released was the second part of our coverage of Star Wars Legacy War, which ends our Legacy coverage. It's been going on for years now. And we actually were going to originally go to Afra next, but we realized that if we really want to build up to that and sort of talk about the development of Afra as a character, we can't really just jump straight into Afra because we still have quite a bit to do that we didn't ever get to for the original Darth Vader comic series and the Star Wars Ongoing series from Marvel. Uh, we'd actually only done the first arcs of each, so Vader and Skywalker Strikes, and got derailed by doing all the different miniseries like Chewbacca and uh, Princess Leia. God, some of these miniseries were just freaking awful. Um, but in the process, we just sort of got, you know, th those titles, those ongoing titles got kind of lost in the shovel. So what we're doing is we're picking up with where we left off with those. We're going to work our way towards Vader down, work our way towards the end of Vader, then get into Afro, work our way toward uh, the uh, Screaming Citadel and all that kind of stuff. So basically, we just recorded, and uh, I've edited, except for adding in the music and such, so edited all the, the talk content and sent off to Mark so we can add the little bits and pieces into it, uh, episodes for, it's two episodes, for Shadows and Secrets, which is the second arc of the Darth Vader series, where Thanoth is introduced, who actually got referenced recently in the newest issue of Dr. Aphra. And then the next thing we plan to record is uh, Showdown on the Smuggler's Moon, which is the next arc of the ongoing Star Wars series, and that'll get us to the place where both of them are ready to jump into Vader Down as our next discussion. My guess is that the Vader Down discussion will happen sometime in the first quarter or so of next year, because once we get to that point, you figure Shadows and Secrets is the second November episode as part of that whole Tops sponsorship thing that we're doing. We're going to have two episodes per month, at least at the end of December. Um, the second November episode will be Shadows and Secrets Part 1. Then Shadows and Secrets Part 2 comes up in December as the first of the December episodes. And then more than likely, we'll just um, go ahead into Showdown at the Smuggler, on the Smuggler's Moon to be able to take that through uh, early December, early January. And then in late January, start our... Uh, look back at 2017, more than likely. It just kind of depends on when our recording sessions can take place, because one of the things we're wary of is doing any kind of year-in-review stuff when there's still new stuff coming out for that year. And unlike in some previous years where it used to be, oh, well, December isn't going to have very much, now that we've got Star Wars films being released in December every year, it seems like, um, there's always stuff to accompany it being released at the same time, so we don't want to jump the gun on that one. So our year in review should start in January looking back at 2017 and it should be four episodes which tends to be what it has been since you know the shakeup with new films and everything. So you'll have one on the books, one on the comics, one on the uh, film, the TV stuff, and then one on sort of everything else which would be games and things like that like Battlefront 2. So those are coming. Uh, we haven't recorded anything yet for anything beyond Shadows and Secrets, that Darth Vader arc, but that gives us two episodes basically ready to go once Mark drops in the music and such to put up on uh, StarWarsReport.com and into our podcast feed, which you can find on iTunes and elsewhere. As for Cloud City Casino, we've reached the point, of course, where the big news is Battlefront 2. So we've had a couple episodes since the last of these updates. Uh, on the 24th of October, the most recent, I think, around the time of the last update, was that we did an episode that was all about the disillusion of Visceral Games, the cancellation and sort of retooling of the Star Wars project they were working on with Amy Hennig and all. So that one was out there. Then we did an episode that focused on Jedi challenges. You know, this thing. So we spent pretty much a whole episode talking about that and then a little bit about other news of new announcements and stuff coming out of Fantasy Flight Games. And then our most recent episode is the first in probably three in a row that will focus on Battlefront 2, only instead of starting with talking about the campaign or talking about the multiplayer, we started with the controversies, because it's been a hell of a news month when it comes to Battlefront 2, usually not in a particularly good way. So we did an episode that talked about stuff like the controversy about the cost in credits of unlocking characters and how that was changed the day before launch, uh, talked about the controversy over the microtransactions, whether it's gambling or not, the legal thing going on with Belgium, and whether or not it's going to be seen to be uh, an illegal form of gambling and so forth. I got a chance to extol a little bit of economics teacherness into the episode. 
talk to you about the nature of microtransactions and why they exist and all that kind of stuff and how the gaming market is kind of at a crunch point. And basically, we just kind of delved into it from all the different controversy standpoints so that in our next episode we can focus on game mechanics and multiplayer, and then the following episode we can talk about the campaign. Uh, so expect at least another couple of episodes focusing almost entirely on Battlefront 2 coming up in the next couple of episodes of Cloud City Casino, which of course I host alongside Michael Morris, who was uh, the founder of the show, also over at StarWarsReport.com. Speaking of audio content, for those who are denizens or above in the Patreon process here, um, we have had, of course, more commentaries. I always guarantee at least two new audio commentaries per month for those $5 or higher tiers, and we have had those. We've had a couple more released here for November, and those were for Clone Wars, and we had another special bonus one released in November for Forces of Destiny Volume 1. So basically, at this point, if you are listening to the Patreon commentaries, and you've been able to catch commentaries for Cat and Mouse, which is the first chronological episode of the series, and then there's The Hidden Enemy, which takes place also prior to the Clone Wars film. Then the Clone Wars film itself, that commentary is released uh, right before the update that I gave you guys last time, I believe. And then for November, we saw the release of commentaries for Clone Cadets and Supply Lines, and then also that bonus one for Forces of Destiny Volume 1. So, of course, as always, expect at least two more commentaries to pop up, focusing on Clone Wars episodes for now, next month in December, uh, and we'll continue going with those. We also, of course, for those who are the nobility of the butler universe, that is the top tier on Patreon, that's the $10 and above tier, we did do our first Patreon-exclusive Q&A, so that video also went up in early November. Now, as for YouTube content, that's pretty easy, right? You can just pull up the channel here and look at the YouTube content. But for what it's worth, uh, let's see. Things that have come out since our last update video would include uh, episodes of From the Star Wars Home Video Library that continued the look at the Spaceballs home video releases. They turned out to be way more than anyone probably ever imagined. So we had uh, Spaceballs on DVD Part 1, which is episode number 126, released the same day as the last update. But then we had more DVDs and Blu-rays, too, as 127. 128 then brought more DVDs and Blu-rays again. 129 then brought uh, the 2015 Spaceballs Blu-rays into the picture. Then we had episode 129.1, which was some clarifications on Spaceball stuff. And sure enough, 129.2, which also brought in the Astronomy 101 DVD sets that included Spaceballs. So quite a few episodes of From the Star Wars Home Video Library released, but more focusing on Spaceballs in the last month or so than focusing on Star Wars itself. Um, of course, as new products, of course, come in for Fantasy Fight Game stuff, I also do the little uh, unbox-type videos. They're not really unboxing, but the videos of, hey, here's what the contents are now that they are outside the box, so you can sort of decide whether things are uh, of interest to you. So we just had the X-Wing Guns for Hire expansion release, so I went through a look at the contents of that. We also had the newest of the LCG Force Packs come out with objective sets 270 to 274. Those are also looked at on the channel. Uh, I did some videos relating to Jedi Challenges that I just showed you the box of a moment ago. Did an unboxing. Uh, did a video that shows me playing on an iPhone 5S and an iPhone 6. Uh, basically, so you can see me as I play. And then I did some uh, in-game footage with commentary and some without as another video so you can see what I see when I'm playing Jedi Challenges, for those who are curious about that, trying to decide whether it's worth the 200 bucks to actually pick up Jedi Challenges or not. Uh, did some more PlayStation VR uh, Let's Plays, including a couple parts that I did for the game Spark, which is sort of a competitive multiplayer sport sort of thing. Uh, and for Skyrim VR, yes, the entire Elder Scrolls V Skyrim game has been re-released, fully playable in VR for PlayStation VR. Speaking of PlayStation VR, if you are looking for holiday deals and such on PlayStation VR, you might buy a bundle, you might buy it separately, uh, you want to get yourself a PlayStation VR headset and jump into that whole thing. I did also put together a PlayStation VR Models and Bundles 2017 Holiday Buying Guide, which is on the YouTube channel, that takes a look at the different hardware versions of the headset, of the processor box, of the move controllers, of the camera, and what combinations these come in in the different variants of packages out there for PlayStation VR. Spoiler alert, 
If you want the newest headset hardware and the processor box that allows HDR pass-through for your 4K TV, you're going to need to get the Skyrim bundle that was released on November 17th, or you're going to need to get the Doom VFR bundle that's released on December 1st. Otherwise, you're getting the old hardware regardless of which other bundle you get. See, I just saved you about half an hour of watching that video, but it's available on the channel if you want more detail. I also, speaking of product overviews and reviews, did take a quick look at the Rebel Files Deluxe Edition, so you can see what's actually in that one, because it's not really getting nearly the amount of press and attention that some of those earlier books like The Jedi Path and Book of Sith got. But it is out there, it is pretty cool, it does have the artifacts, it does have a special case, and we looked at it here on the channel. The biggest thing for the YouTube channel, though, of course, is that with Battlefront 2 out, my Battlefront livestream podcast is back. Again, I call it a podcast, probably more of a vodcast video than audio, um, but basically just a live stream series where I play some Battlefront 2, sometimes with guests, sometimes myself, and I'm having an ongoing discussion with the people in the chat about pretty much just whatever. Uh, sort of a fun way for me to play and get some interaction in at the same time, uh, and for folks who want to pop in and uh, have a discussion to jump into that. Um, picked up for that with, let's see, I guess it was episode 54? of the Battlefront Livestream podcast, and I've streamed all the way up through uh, episode number 61 at this point, and I'm actually about ready to stream some more on the same day uh, that I'm recording this video. So lots of Battlefront 2 live streaming going on for those who are curious, including the entirety of the campaign with my commentary as I'm playing it. So for those who are interested in seeing the campaign, but also want to hear my thoughts on it kind of as it happens, then... That's the way to do it. Uh, Battlefront Livestream Podcast, again, here on the YouTube channel. And lastly, I would point out that uh, you may recall that when it comes to writing about Star Wars, not only do I have my A Saga on Home Video, a fan's guide to U.S. Star Wars home video releases, which you can find on Amazon, I've also been contributing with an essay each time to the trilogy of Sequart Anthologies, they're basically essay collections about Star Wars, kind of taking a critical, scholarly-type look at Star Wars as a franchise. And, of course, we had a long time ago exploring the Star Wars cinematic universe, in which I talked about the first season of Rebels and sort of deconstructed that. A Galaxy Far, Far Away exploring Star Wars comics, in which I took a look at the early Marvel stuff from their earliest stuff all the way up through basically around the uh, adaptation of The Empire Strikes Back. And now, just released on Amazon and presumably available elsewhere soon, but Amazon's the first place that it seems to have shown up. We have the third and final one of those volumes, which is A More Civilized Age, exploring the Star Wars Expanded Universe, which focuses on the books. This time, I was privileged to actually not write a regular essay, but to write the afterword, not just for that book, but for that entire series of books. And in this book, it is an afterword that is opposite of forward by Timothy Zahn, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, the afterword is entitled Finding Our Lack of Blind Faith, refreshing. And it's all about basically why a love of Star Wars requires being critical, requires looking at things in an intellectually honest way. You've heard that phrase a lot of times on this channel and in the podcast and such that I do. And basically just kind of gives a positive spin on wrapping things up for this uh, series of essays that aren't always necessarily super positive, uh, but which always try to take a fair eye to the Star Wars saga. Uh, what I'll do is next time, next month when I do the update, I should have a physical copy of it in my hands, and I'll show you all three of them here, and probably show you a Saga on Home video for those who haven't seen that book cover, but if you're watching this channel, you probably have already. Uh, just so you can kind of see what's out there. But again, it's called A More Civilized Age, Exploring the Star Wars Expanded Universe. It is available now on Amazon and soon elsewhere. Uh, the Kindle edition is not up as of today, but presumably it will be soon. Usually it follows fairly close behind... Uh, the print version becoming available. That is something uh, Joseph F. Uh, Berenato and Rich Handley edited, and I just happen to have contributed to, along with many, many others. And I think that pretty much brings us up to speed on all the different projects right now. There's plenty of other stuff that I'm trying to get the time to do, like adding more uh, to finish up the DC deck building game stuff for my Nate's Favorite Deck Building Games series mainly so I can just get rid of some of the packages that I want to show you and just condense it down to one giant box. Um, still want to get into that for Marvel Legendary and some of the other games that I play, and I keep trying to wait until we get closer to the end of the year, but we're already pretty close before putting together a new edition of my video timeline of the home video releases. 
or from the Star Wars Home Video Library, I think we're probably to the point now where we're close enough to the end of the year that it would make sense for me to go ahead and do that. So sometime within the next month or so, my hope is to be able to put that together. Basically, uh, I just need to decide whether I'm editing what already exists or re-recording the entire thing because now there's a question of whether or not I want to include some of those things like the spooks that were given the thumbs up, like space balls and such, in that video, which is already long enough, frankly, as it is. Um, but with that, I'll wrap this up. Again, thank you very much for your interest in the various projects. Again, you can find them all at the links that have been shown here. And thank you, of course, to the people who are supporters on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. Be sure to look out for your name down uh, in the thanks as the credits roll. And I'll be back next month with another monthly update. Again, thank you for your interest. May the Force be with you, and happy holidays, whichever holidays they might be in whichever part of the world you might be in. Uh, let's wrap up the year in a positive way. I'm trying to, but that wreck's making it difficult. But dang it, I'm going to give it my level best. Do people say level best anymore? Anyway, see you next month.